Good morning, guys. Title this message for a reason. Um, comply or die. What the world is telling us. Flashing neon signs pretty much everywhere. These were the scriptures I got this morning. The Lord said it's a warning because it's life or death. One, two, defeat or victory. So are we just going to lay down? No, these were the scriptures, guys. I'm just going to pretty much, you know, take it to the Lord in prayer, dedication. Very open for debate. But ask him first. First one was Isaiah 18, 1 through 7. Second one was Psalms 18, 1 through 8. And the last one was Revelations 18, 1 through 8. Guys, I get it. Plenty of scriptures in there. Obey the laws of the land. Obey the mad rule over you. Plenty of them. But what are you going to do with Daniel? The king had a decree that was the law of the land. Did he stop praying? No. Did he go out and blast it with a bullhorn? No. But he opened his windows. Did what the Lord told him to do. Was it Miriam? That was Moses' mother. Killing all the babies. Defied the law. During Jesus' time, Jesus did, did the same thing, guys. To heal the sick on the Sabbath. Well, that was the, you know, the religious law. Still, it was a law. I'm not saying we should break the law, guys. That's not what I'm saying. So don't let the pendulum swing the other way. That's why I said this is open for debate, but it first has to come from what is the Lord showing you, guys. But all this, man, I was at the at a store last night, one I don't shop at anymore. One of the nation's largest retailers. You can read between the lines on that. I don't shop at it anymore because of the spirit that's behind it. So when I walk her down the aisles one day, more than once. I said to myself, I hate this place. There's a spirit. Guys, it's corporate, money-driven. Love of money is the root of all evil. It was all about the money. That's what this is all about. Money and the death. They don't care, guys. They just want the money and the power. A handful, maybe thousands or whatever, but not a conspiracy theory, guys. It's the reality of the truth. Just shut up. Shove a mask on your face. Don't say anything about COVID. Don't say anything about abortion. Don't say anything about gay marriages, gay rights. Don't say anything about anything that might offend somebody. I'm not trying to be offensive, guys. I'm telling you what's the Lord telling you to do. Comply and die, or do you want to be victorious? What is he telling you to do? It's not time, guys, to just lie down. Okay, I'm going to end with this, okay? I do know what I'm saying, guys. Three, two weeks in the hospital, three major emergency rooms. When I went there, I had to get part of my toe removed because an infection set in. I'm diabetic, didn't see it. My whole leg swelled up, guys. It was red as a ch red hot chili pepper. Well, the first hospital wanted to pretty much cut my whole foot off. I probably wouldn't even be here right now. I had to tell them, no, I'm not going to comply and die. Of course, it was life-threatening, but I stuck to my gun. said, get rid of the infection first. That's what we need to do. It's the infection in the election. It's the infection in the in the world. It's the infection of just believe a lie. Just shut up. Guys, they don't want small businesses. 
They don't want anybody to say anything. They want to kill babies on demand. Dismember them and pretty much it's pretty gruesome, guys. We've got innocent blood on our hands, but it's not just the babies. It's the born and the unborn. Man, guys, I live in a major city and they just passed a law. It, you can't even have it. They won't even let, I don't get it. There's some sanitary issues. I get some of that. There's got to be a better solution though. But these tent cities that the homeless are making, they just go in there and the police rip them down. Well, they have workers come in, gut them. These people lose everything. They don't have anything to begin with. Come back and every piece of cloth, whatever they've had, little bit that they had, it's gone. The shelters are closed. Where do they go, guys? If you don't comply, man, look how Los Angeles was. Backing down a little bit. Look at how Facebook was. YouTube. All the major medias. Accusing Mostly, really, the president, but they're accusing a lot of a lot of people about lying, and and they're doing, and they're the main culprits, honestly. Why? For the money. Why don't wear a mask, God? Because of the hiddenness behind it. It's not hidden. It's not a conspiracy theory, guys. Like I said in some of my other messages, we're still trying to figure out who shot JFK. Ask anybody. People are, you know, do we land on the moon? Do we not? The flag blowing in the wind. I mean, come on, guys. I don't want to pollute your mind with just stuff. Bring it to the Lord. Because he wants to give you life and that much more abundantly. He wants to be, even this, even this election and political mess. Guys, we've idolized it. I'm sorry to say, but true. Donald Trump is not going to, the savior of the world, he's not going to save the day. Jesus is. Does it mean I didn't vote for him or whatever? You know, it's not about that anymore, guys. It's way, way past that. It's about what's behind it. The evil that's behind it, guys. Are we going to comply and die? Are we going to not take a stand? Are we going to do what the Lord tells us to do, guys. Are we obeying and listening? But you're not going to be obeying and listening if we're not seeking Him, we're not praying, we're not opening our Bible. Let me be my bumper sticker. I was on Facebook. It said, I don't care if you can quote the whole Bible. Every scripture in there. If you live your life like you've never opened it. Are we really, really in tune with God? Are we just going to just get sucked into this vortex of stuff? It's time to tune this out, guys. This pollution so that we can live a life more abundantly, a life for Christ. I'm going to end with this, guys. I told you about that hospital stay. Okay, they did have to cut my toe off a little, very little piece, but the first doctor was going to Pretty much cut my foot off, rip it off in fear, trembling. Just, you're going to die. You're going to die. Well, you know, a couple more days, and I very well might have, honestly. It was a really, the infection was pretty, pretty bad, guys. And I didn't see it because it was a little pin prick behind my toe, underneath, up underneath, and I didn't see it till everything kind of blew up. It hurt. And I didn't know why. But then this one day, I was like, man, I looked down, and I was like, man, this is brutal looking. I still did have to have the operation, but this is the last thing I'm going to end with, guys. Very imperative. To cut. My wife and I went to the doctor yesterday, and the report was great. I could walk again. He said, you know, i got to go back in a week. I just have to wear this boot, this funky boot, for a little while and protect it. But he said, shower, the stitches are coming out, everything's healing up. My wife looked at it. She said, man, your toe used to be pretty ugly. Now it looks normal. <laughs> Man, this very little off my toe. But the other the other hospital, the first hospital, that was going to pretty much cut my foot off. So, but this is what they did. The 
doctor was great, awesome doctor at the second hospital where I did have the operation. And when they're done, they clip a little piece of the bone that's still attached to my foot to make sure there's no more infection. And they do a biopsy on it. They, it took a week for all the stuff to come back. Well, the, the infectious doctor came in. He was a great guy. Honestly, you could tell he's very intelligent. And he spent about 10 minutes with me. Most doctors won't even hardly do that. He's very thorough to talk to me, answer questions. And he said, you know, he said that they did some good tests at the first hospital. They tested a sonogram to test my blood flow. And he said, it's kind of like a pop bottle. If you keep trying to pour pop in it or blow into it, it's got to go somewhere. It's clogged, you know. I mean, so unless it, and he said, your bones don't get a lot of blood, but they do need blood to live. If they don't get blood flow to them, they die. While I was in the hospital, my wife kept singing this song. She heard the song on the radio. Can these bones live? Dry bones, dead men's bones. Yes, they can, guys, but not if we're not connected. And how are we connected? It's very scriptural, guys. No man can see the Father except through me. God's plan was Jesus, guys. We couldn't connect with him. We've got to be connected through the vine, through the blood of the Lamb. That's why I said bring this to him in prayer. What's he telling you to do? Comply and die? Or do you want to live? And live that much more abundantly. And live in the Spirit. What I'm telling you guys, don't believe me. Pray about it. See you at 5 in the morning tomorrow. Very imperative we pray as a nation. Weep between the porch and the altar. Love you guys. It's just time. Not to stand, be that barking dog. Man, if we listen to the world, they don't even want, some of the places don't even sing in church. What? How are you going to spread some disease? You know, I was a piece of plexiglass stupidity guys it's just man it's just number and dumber i forgot to think i forgot to tell you that i was at the store and everybody's just walking around with a mask on number and dumber walking in the parking lot driving in their car man how much more nonsense do we need come on guys Don't believe me. Don't take my word for it. Don't even, you don't even have to listen to me, but you need to listen to God. And you're not going to listen to him if you're not in your prayer. If you got this, this up your behind, your computer's turned on. If you're checking your emails, if you're doing, man, you've been to more than one service and it's everybody's busy with stuff and thinking about where they're going to eat and hoping service gets out by 12 o'clock so they can go where they're going to go into the park or whatever, you know. Church is kind of overrated in some respects, guys. Where's your mind at? You're not going to get the answers from YouTube, Facebook, me, any other preachers. You're going to get it from God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Word. I'm just directional. I'm telling you the direction to go to. Bring it to him. To live a life more abundantly. That was God's whole plan. So are you connected? Are you, the de are you that dry bone, that dead bone? Or are you connected to God through Jesus by the blood of the Lamb connected to the vine? Love you guys. Talk to you soon.